guys, Mr. Klein here with our first lesson in our chapter on motion. Uh, we'll have two lessons in this chapter. One will be on speed and defining motion. The other one will be on acceleration. Let's go ahead and let's get started. So we're talking about motion, things that are moving, you know, like airplanes as they struggle to take off or land because of crosswinds pushing them across the runway. Now, motion for us seems to be like pretty obvious. You're like, Mr. Klein, we are taking a class on motion, like things move. Duh, what do we have to know about that? Well, as you can see, even the process of taking off and landing for an airplane gets really complicated because lots of things get into the way or are factors of motion. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at them. We're going to learn how to develop um, an answer to figure out how fast something is going and something like that in this lesson. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Like I said, if someone asks you what motion is, the answer seems easy enough. You'd probably say if it's in motion, that means it's moving. It seems obvious. Uh, but the, for our purposes, we need to define it scientifically. And here's the definition. Motion is any change in position of an object. Now, you might be saying, Mr. Klein, I see it move, so it's motion. Yeah, well, the thing is, determining what motion is and what motion isn't can actually be a really tricky business, as you're going to learn in the next section. So what we now need to do is we need to create our graphic organizer. You need a, a lot of space across. So we have motion as the concept. What is it? Well, it's a change in position, okay? Any change in position of an object is motion. Now, how do we know something is in motion? Okay, so you're sitting on your school bus headed to school. You look at your backpack and you remember you have to do your science homework. Shame on you. You should have done it last night. Now, the question we're going to ask ourselves is not whether you did your science homework or no, why didn't you do your science homework rather, but rather, is your backpack moving? Well, to you sitting in the bus, it isn't moving. It's just sitting there. But what about the person who's looking out their window at the bus that you're riding in as it passes by? To that person, your backpack is moving along with the bus. If they had x-ray vision and could see in the bus, they would see the backpack moving along at the same speed as the bus is going. So who's correct? Are you correct that the backpack is sitting there not moving or the person looking out the window? Which one's correct? Well, the answer is both of you are correct. The reason why is because determining whether an object is in motion or not depends on what we call the frame of reference. The frame of reference is the position of the observer in relation to an object in motion. Essentially, motion is a relative concept. It all depends on whether, where the position of what someone is looking at, whether it's in motion or not. Okay, now from your own frame of reference in the bus, the backpack, and your incomplete science homework, is at rest. It's not moving. But to the person looking out the window, your backpack is in motion because it's moving along from where they're at. They're at rest. Okay? And frames of reference can get really complicated when we look at this picture. Okay? So here's a guy sitting on a train as the train passes a house. Okay? So he's looking at the house. Is the house moving to him? Yeah, it's moving along. And in fact, the fences move and the bushes in front of the house are moving in opposite directions. Okay, but he's moving along with it. So motion starts getting complicated whenever we're talking about frames of reference. And you might be thinking, going back to this example, is the house moving? Well, if you're standing in front of the house, you say no. But what about from a view above the solar system? Okay, if we look above the solar system, the house is moving as the entire planet Earth orbits around the sun. And not only that, as the Earth spins on its axis. Getting complicated, I know. So let's go ahead and let's add, let's add this concept to our graphic organizer. How do we know if something's in motion? Motion completely depends on the reference point of the observer. Okay, so we have that in. And so now let's talk about how do we determine motion. Okay, we've determined that, but how do we define how fast something is moving? When you look at an object in motion, you try to figure out how fast it's going. And that's what we call speed. Speed is the rate of how fast or slow an object is moving. And there are two general types of speed that scientists generally measure. The first one is what we call instantaneous speed. Instantaneous speed is the speed of an object moving at a moment in time. Okay, so when you're driving a car, which if you're a sixth grader, you shouldn't be driving a car because you should be like 
only old driving a car if you're old enough to drive uh, drive it and have insurance. Okay, so whatever you speed see you speed on the C on the speedometer right here is its instantaneous speed. So if I look at this, I say, oh, it's about 90, 95 kilometers per hour. Okay, that's the instantaneous speed. So when I'm driving in my car and I look down and I see my speed, I'm like, oh, I'm at about 95 kilometers per hour speed. That's at that moment I look at the speedometer. It might change but before or after, but whenever I look at that, that's instantaneous speed. But generally when we talk about how fast we're going and, uh, and when we're talking about going places, generally that's what we talk about is average speed. Average speed is the speed of the object moving over a period of time. Okay. If you left your home and traveled 300 kilometers in three hours to visit your cousins, your average speed is 100 kilometers per hour for the entire trip. Now, even though you may have stopped or at red lights or to eat or anything like that, that gets into the average speed. Now, you might be saying, well, Mr. Klein, what do you mean by that? Okay, so let's look at this example. Okay, so the car takes off, stops at the stop sign, okay, stops at the red light, and keeps on going. The entire time, the time elapsed is moving even though the car is stopped so in 0 0.20 hours it travels five miles or you know eight kilometers uh and what it ends up doing is once you determine the distance over time five miles divided by 0.2 hours you get 25 miles per hour or about 40 kilometers per hour so Let's go ahead and let's add this to our graphic organizer. How do we measure motion? Well, we measure it through speed, and there's two types of speed, instantaneous speed and average speed, okay? And as you saw, I kind of did some quick mental math, so we can mathematically determine average speed. So that's what we're going to transition to. How do we determine the speed of an object? It's very simple. It's a very simple math formula. Since we know that speed's a rate where distance is divided by the time to determine the speed, the formula looks like this. Speed equals distance divided by time. Or if we use the abbreviations, S equals D divided by T. Okay, so let's look, do a math problem, okay? So we have an airplane traveling 300 kilometers in two hours. What is the airplane's average speed? Okay, so we use our formula, speed equals distance divided by time. And then we substitute, speed equals 300 kilometers divided by two hours. We divide 300 by two and gives us a speed of 150 kilometers per hour. Pretty simple, okay? Just remember S equals D divided by T, and that's how you get your answer, okay? So in addition to this, we can actually figure out the speed of an object graphically by putting a graph where time elapses on the x-axis and distance is on the y-axis. And where the points intersect the x-y coordinates, you can use that, that distance and time in order to figure out the speed of an object. Okay, so we have distance and time all right here. So you see the green line is a fast, steady speed or distance over time. You see it speeds up, but when it goes flat, it's stationary, okay, because it's, it's not increasing its distance. And then whenever it slopes downward, that means it's returning to the start. Or if it's speeding up, okay, where that curved line, that blue line, is what we call acceleration, and we'll talk about that in the next lesson. So we want to add our formula, speed equals distance divided by time, to average speed. Okay, so our graphic organizer is almost done. We're going to head into our final section right here. What is velocity? Now, you might have heard that. You might, well, Mr. Klein, isn't just velocity speed? No, speed and velocity are slightly different concepts. Speed usually isn't enough to describe an object's motion. So what we also describe is the direction the object is moving as well. That is what we call the velocity or the direction and distance an object is moving. So we'll say it'd be moving 10 meters per second north or 10 meters per second up or something like that. That's velocity. Velocity is what we call a vector quantity or a measurement that describes the, both the size and direction of an object. Okay, so size and direction we'll call vector quantities. Velocity is a vector quantity. So let's go ahead and let's finish out our graphic organizer right here. How do we measure motion? Well, we can measure it with speed and we can measure it with direction. Or if you measure speed and direction at the same time, you get velocity. So there you go. That's your lesson. Uh, just remember that motion is any change in position. Now, how do we know it's changing position? Well, that depends on the frame of reference or the location of the observer watching the object moving. Okay, as a result, motion is what we consider to be relative and not absolute because 
whether an object is in motion or not depends on where someone is looking at it. If you remember the uh, example I gave of the incomplete science homework on the school bus. Okay, we can measure motion in several ways. One is speed. And we can measure speed in two ways. One, at the moment we look at how fast something's going, that's instantaneous speed. The other one is the average speed or the distance an object traveled over time. That's regardless of whether it's speeding up, slowing down, stopping, or anything like that. The other way we can measure motion is through direction, north, south, east, west, up, down, left, right, toward, away, anything like that. And we can, you combine the two, you have what's called velocity, which is a vector quantity. So there you go. That's your lesson on speed and motion. We'll be doing a lab in our class with this. In addition, we'll be doing a lot of problems with uh, practice problems with speed. Okay, in order for you to get that down, just remember it's distance divided by time. And of course, we'll be using calculators, so it's not that difficult to do. So there you go. That's your lesson. And if, as always, you have any questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching. <music>